all right here's a nice food thought video because i need a place to vent and get all my thoughts out i'm very tired of getting disappointed it's actually really really getting to me in a way that is palpable like so hard and it sucks because i actually do ask for so little like the lake tahoe guy i went on a date with them and i remember all i i made it explicitly clear multiple times that all i really was asking and requesting was that like hey i don't want to give you my social media quite yet maybe after like the second or the third date so that there's more like trust and like more like topics discussed and you know some things i just like to keep private and i don't want to tell someone and then they went out of their way to purposely find my content and then watch as much of it as they can for hours and then even dare to get mad at me for what i said about them in my lake tahoe video very fucking annoying it's like okay like that just ruined it they could have been normal they could have been fucking normal they could have just sh like hell that's the same night and evening they before they even decided to go on that deep dive through my youtube content and any other fucking social media they were curious about they could they genuinely could have just met up with me that night and we could have had another fun date for two days in a row and bonded and i probably would have gave them my channel and deleted the lake tahoe video but no they wanted to be fucking weird and show that they had no respect for my boundaries uh i got reached out by a friend um or ex-friend i cut them off because they were still fraternizing with my ex jared despite knowing in detail all the shit he did to me i was very vocal about it but that nigga was still clinking drinks with that motherfucker and I just was like, you know what? No. And I was betrayed because it's like, you know what he did. You know the fucked up thing he said about me. You know the fucked up things he did to me and over me. I am not cool with this guy. And I just thought to myself, no, just no. Fuck that. I ch and so I ended things with them. But then I guess what? Because like I went, they had a comedy show recently and I did not show up. And so they had basically no one in the fucking audience to perform to. So my guess is they all wrapped up early. <laughs> As they fucking deserved. Maybe it's not. And because it's like, you know, and then next thing you know, my Joe, the guy I cut off, he went from like, ooh, you can't stop me from fraternizing with who I want. I'm not stopping you from fraternizing with them. I'm stopping you from fraternizing with me because I have respect and boundaries for myself. And I am not trying to like, no, because this is what will happen. If I were to go, hey, Joe, I'll still be your friend, even though you're still cool with Jared, then guess what? It gives Jared an easier time trying to access my life and trying to worm his way back in under the because he's done that before. Like, oh, we have mutual friends. What do you mean? You wouldn't say hi to me if I was at a comedy mic. Oh, do you really do blah, 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 blah. bullshit asshole? And so really what I need is just. Anyway, Joe hit me up just last night on some, oh, you know, if you want, I can give you a ride to this open mic or any comedy venue you like. And it's just like, I couldn't, like, I kind of felt like I can have a good time. Sure, I could go back to having nice car rides where he picks me up and takes me to these open mics and we chit chat a bit and have little fun drinks and talk and after the show is over and that could be nice but not anymore because i like i thought no i'm gonna be equally happy if i just take a bus there and support them as comedians not friends and then just simply leave because it's like no you're way too comfortable being around people who hurt me and that's not a friend of mine a real friend of mine would be willing to pop niggas over hurting me like jared did a real friend of mine would be checking in on how i was doing ignoring him at events all of that not doing what they want fuck that shit but since i didn't show up to his mic yeah i guess joe was like "Ooh, i can't i can give you a ride i just straight up said no joe because you did what you did if i showed up to an like you would you know how that feels because when i was your friend all you had to say was "Ooh, this guy at this one show i asked him not to record me and that maybe he should reconsider recording people before their sets in case they want to be anonymous and he told me to go fuck myself unprovoked and i have to leave whenever i see him because he has such a bad energy and then i went yeah understandable joe and i would leave with joe and be like fuck that guy but you mean to tell me that with the guy who fully did despicable shit to me you're gonna just sit there and be like oh he didn't hurt me yeah no fuck you I didn't say fuck you because I still have a modicum of respect left for Joe because he still is an asset to the comedy scene and very nice to people, even though he doesn't have to be. 
and he wasn't very nice to me when he did what he did. But I still told him the gesture is appreciated, but overall empty. And it disappoints me. I had two options for dates today for one movie. Both of them cancelled. That got on my nerves. One of them was just like trying to put in as little effort as possible while being as horny as possible. So it's like, oh, okay, I know what game you're playing, sir, and it's not going to work on me. And the other guy, he was actually just like, oh, I have a work trip that I have to spontaneously leave for. It's really heavy, so I'm going to be working. But the second I get back, I'm going to talk to you. And that seems like a lie. I think that he really just had something else on the back burner, but whatever. Um, I hooked up with a guy the other day, and he's already blocked by today because I had emotional overwhelm about it. Then again, it's not inherently my fault because the dude did show up to the hookup just on some extremely weird energy. He claims something happened with his family, like, right before. And he, like, he did call me, like, he told me around, like, er, fucking 1 p.m. He was like, oh, hey, sorry, I have to... I can't talk right now. And then 10 minutes later, I didn't even respond to him because I didn't, I just was like, okay, he says he's going through something. I'll just wait for him to respond. But then next thing you know, he was texting me every 10 minutes like, ooh, it is a crisis. Are you good? And I was like, I mean, I'm not the one going through a crisis. Why are you asking me? Are you okay? I'm just, I'm not tripping. But eventually we met up. He showed up to my place acting fucking weird, hyperventilating, standing up on my bed type shit. Or, like, not really a bed, but still, it's like, I kept telling him, you can lay down. Can you at least take off your shoes? And he was like, I think I'd rather stand. And I said, cool. Can you take off your shoes? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because it's like, sir, you're standing on the place I sleep. Get a grip. Anyway, we did the date. We did the deed. It was fun. He had a great fucking big set of balls, boomerang shaped fucking 10 inch or more size dick very nice very nice it was just a blowjob though but don't worry like who knows maybe i'll be talking to him a week from now when i'm ovulating i'll just say impressive i still needed that energy of just like look i can have sex with someone new and fun and have an enjoyable time and feel nice it wasn't all bad the only reason he got blocked was because Let's just say his behavior was strange, and when I talked about it to a friend, they were like, oh, he's probably cheating on someone, that's why he's acting weird. And I thought, fuck, not again, that happened with Morgan before. So I did some deep dive through some messages, I saw some texts that didn't align, plus the dude lied about his age multiple times, so I just kind of was like getting a bad feeling about that. I hit him up today, we talked, he was like, oh. He clarified that, like, he really was having a family crisis, but another part of me did block him. Because I was thinking, okay, he is telling a little bit too much lies for comfort. Like, you don't need to lie and keep flip-flopping between 27, 28, and 29. Stick to one age. It's fucking weird. Yeah. And then on top of that, I just thought to myself, hmm, I would have showed concern over his family sooner. But if it is just a one-night stand type thing, or if it's nothing serious, then I'm not trying to embarrass myself by looking like I care too much because let's just say the last few times I cared too much about people let's just say those people left without a fucking care and without a fucking word and so that yeah and I think that actually has done more damage to me than I thought because it's like okay almost every dude on my roster just vanished out of nowhere JC dipped fucking emotionlessly and coldly and heartlessly Morgan dipped for someone else has tried to come back only like a few times but that's just because he's a unfaithful loser and trying his luck but he still blocks me just as quickly since I think he's really trying to be faithful to this girl at least or just trying not to see me because he finally thinks I'm too toxic whatever not my circus not my monkeys with Jared Jared tried to come back yesterday yes that pisses me off more than you can imagine The message he sent was, guess who has two thumbs and got all their money back? It's this guy. Hope you're doing well. And I just thought to myself, I want you to physically fucking die, man. I want you dead. I want, like, I physically, if you got hit by a fucking car, I would laugh and cheer and dance in the street. I would walk up to your corpse and do Fortnite dances. If you physically got curb stomped by someone... In the comedy scene, 
I would immediately walk up to that person and drop their pants and suck their dick, bloody boots on and all. I would be so fucking happy to see you miserable. You don't need my fucking presence in your life anymore because you showed that you weren't fucking worthy of it. Like, Jared's only trying to come back now because he's finally realizing, oh yeah, that super hot 23-year-old who's like 10 years younger than me, who was like perfect in every single way and I totally adored, and all she asked was for me to not like sexually abuse her and to talk to her nicely, and I failed at both. Hmm. Like hell, even other things. It's like, okay, how about you help me with my finances and checking out screenshots in my laptop because I'm really struggling with that. He couldn't even fucking do that. He couldn't do that at all. He couldn't do, like, no. It's like, and also, just to clarify, if anyone missed out on this bit of tea, Jared spent almost $3,000 on a scam because he thought it was the sex worker Angel Youngs that was actually contacting him for real. And he was so delusional about it in that time period. He was like, oh, it makes sense. We went in the same circles. Like, I watched a lot of the, her videos and she's the video star. It makes sense that we'd eventually touch base eventually. I watched all her videos. No, that's not how it works. If I could comment on every single porn video of one particular porn star, it doesn't mean we're going to start talking you idiot and even like no he literally fell for the equivalent of a ooh hot sexy milfs in your area scam and thought that he was gonna fuck the famous porn star who has a lot of money angel youngs for a cheap measly hundred bucks and then saw nothing wrong with ooh we need a security deposit oh we also need another deposit and another deposit and we need to pay for a background check actually give us this amount also this amount and then is hoping and then just casually gave thousands of dollars to I remember he showed me the video. It was this cheap fucking deep fake. The worst deep fake I've ever seen. What's so funny is after I cut him off recently, I reposted the video of him um, <laughs> uh, that he sent me of Ang the Angel Young's deep fake. And I tagged Angel Young's and she responded herself from her actual social media page with hundreds of thousands of fucking people like a hundred thousand people saw her say if you fall for something as stupid as this then that's on you so she literally tag team boasted his ass with me like and i was so fucking happy i was like jesus christ <laughs> this might be the best fucking slam dunk i've ever had on an ex ever <laughs> you lose me and you get fucking mocked with me and your favorite porn star and you still lose your money huh mm-hmm <laughs> he's such a fucking loser and i'm just pissed that it's like he just thought he could come back as if shit was sweet he thought that i would be jumping for joy like yay jared you got your money back i don't give a fuck you fucking loser asshole i know why you're here you just want sex but no sir you gave three fucking thousand dollars to a fucking what you thought was a sex worker because you were really hoping that the thing that I needed after I broke up with you and left you for being a fucking piece of shit, you thought, ooh, I need to record a video of me fucking this porn star so I could send it to Tamia and piss her off and make her, make her see that I'm doing better. That backfired hard. Even so, it's like, okay, you knew I was struggling with my rent. You knew I was struggling with my financial situation. You knew I was struggling with so fucking much. And your goddamn... Like... He could have, mm, he could have done anything else in the world with that money. He could have helped me out to win me back. He could have helped himself out. He said, I'm going to fucking pay off my debts and build up my credit and work on myself. He said, I, he could have paid for therapy for himself or for me or both. Because it's like, and also just, uh, there's so many layers to why he's pathetic. Because he scammed his bank. Because he basically submitted a paycheck to two banks at the same time. And then like scammed Chime. And then had, like, basically an extra, like, $1,500. And just, mm, he has done, he's fucking stupid and pathetic beyond belief. And that's already embarrassing enough. I don't, this, the sad thing is, this story gets, like, 27 layers worse. I'll only say the layer, sorry, of... <sighs> I have really good memory, so... That's why sometimes when I talk about certain things that happen to me, you might see me getting fared up all again because I'm just reliving it in my head. Every single feeling, every single sensation is coming to mind and it's fucking me up. 
but to sum it up, I guess, yeah, he, it's like, meanwhile, like, a week before that, he was out here like, ooh, sorry to hear about your rent. Hopefully that gets resolved. Oh, hey, you want me to help you get 15 bucks worth of art supplies at this craft store? Shit, you better sit there in the store against this podium with me and scour hard through your email and the websites for any sort of coupon. And it's like, and like refusing to get like extra wings with like two fucking mix and match five ninety nine pizza orders at Domino's. It would have cost him like an extra five bucks to get some fucking wings. But since we couldn't agree on a flavor, he was like, fine, we're not getting them then. So he was doing all types of bulk shit with me, the girl who he claimed he thought about marriage and kids and a family and a future with and love for. But it's like he couldn't. And also aside from that, even just like, oh, look, the rapey shit. The rapey shit. Mm. So, yeah, he did what he did. To show that I was not a priority and that I didn't matter to him and that he was selfish and it backfired. So I don't care that he's got his shit together now because I'm not someone who's going to benefit from it. I don't care. So he can be at all the shows in the comedy scene and have all the friends because it's like it's so funny. He would get mad at me for talking about shit he did to me openly because people that he was friends with would hear about him and might not want him around anymore. He cared more about the consequences of his actions making him lose other people instead of me. So it's like, you know what? Fuck those people and fuck you. If they still want to be around you, they can. They just can't be around me. And you can all deal with the consequences of me being gone. Since just wow. And now you have to deal with having open mics where even if there was many people, there would at least be me and now no one's showing up. And Jared, you can enjoy the fact that now you can go to these open mics and have people that shake your hands and drink beers with you and joke with you, but none of them are going to care about you. I cared about him so much that even after all was said and done about the Angel Young's bullshit and the worst context that I'm not sharing just because... I'm still trying to get fully out of the situation myself before I share every single detail. I still cared for him. I was still trying to hook him up with fucking temp jobs on apps and trying to convince him to get a food handler's card and these easy ways to get the money he needed back. And it fucking kills me. It kills me so hard that I want to draw blood for myself physically. But I still bother. He didn't even ask how I was doing for almost a full fucking week. I had to ask, I had to tell him that it's fucked up not to ask. And even then he couldn't pretend to care when I, he did ask only because it was out of guilt. He's a bitch. He's a terrible fucking person and I'm tired of it. Yeah, he can, uh, burn in fucking hell. Mm. I guess I'm noticing a trend with all of this is that I really crave intimacy that doesn't have to... I crave the type of intimacy that is genuine. It's not artificial. Like, I can meet with someone and it's not just like, oh, look, here's a man who's obsessed with the idea of fucking me. And that's it. Oh, look, here's... Like, I'm tired of having my hopes get up. Like, maybe I finally met a guy who's going to treat me safely. Just for Jared to be like Morgan, but in a different fucking shell. And all the signs I missed, because I dared to believe someone at face value and actually trust some of their decent actions along the way that maybe they were a trustworthy, decent person. And I feel it's like here I was like, I'm gonna just have a nice day where I could have like two dates and maybe a fun dinner and yippee, I'm gonna be on my hot girl shit and both of them canceled. Here I was like, I'm gonna just hook up with this guy. And I, the guy I hooked up the other day. I had a lot of fun with him regardless. I don't regret it, but it's still just like, even then I didn't ask dude how his, cause I think someone in his family might've died or maybe not died, but went through something. I don't know if I mentioned that in this video, I apologize. But yeah, the guy I hooked up with the other day, he showed up kind of being weird and he admitted that it had to do with some family issues going on. So, he was kind of weird before the blowjob, but he did thank me after it, saying that he was glad that I was really nice about 
how he was acting and he even thanked me again today for asking how he was doing I didn't have to ask but I wanted to but a part of me was disgusted at the idea of asking because the last thing I would need is someone going oh look at her she's trying to fuck up boundaries and try to slither her way and have feelings for me and be too much it's like no I'm just trying to show human decency which I guess is fucking rare it's like oh no I'm just being a decent human being and asking if you're okay because I would hate for someone to suffer in silence I know how that feels and I hate that it's like I hate having to just like no I don't want to be around people where there's an elephant in the room that can't be addressed where it's like I'm fucking this dude but I can't ask if he's truly doing all right or else he's gonna accuse me of of trying to be some lovesick harpy hopeless romantic who's obsessed with him and probably gonna bust out his windows or something like no I'm just asking to be nice because sadly unlike you asshole when I was going through it you didn't give a fuck but I give a fuck because I happen to be a decent fucking person unlike some people and then as for just and I'm annoyed that I trusted Jared and that I ever thought that he could be a good person to me. And here he is being the topic of a however many a video. Because I'm still recovering. And the nerve to just think, ah, I'm finally, like, the, he finally got his money up and now he's trying to slither his way back in. No, you wanted, you cared more about how other people felt. You can have those other people, you can't have me, that's how it works. You showed I didn't matter. You showed I was not a priority. You showed I was a sex object. You showed I was a punching bag for your own insecurities. You showed that I was a boost for your self-esteem and that I genuinely did not matter to you. No matter how good I was. So, because you were a fucking cunt, you go over them with them people who will ignore you. They won't invite you out for drinks. They won't have dinners with you. They won't have a family or a future with you like you could have had with me. But guess what? You can't have that shit with me either. Because you chose what you chose. Uh, someone that knows my disgusting slut of a biological mother hit me up recently in public. They ran into me as I was on my way to an event. And they were like, oh my god, oh, we're so happy to see you. And her kid was around, and he's was or is friends with my younger brother. So I talked to them because I was like, you know what, I care about my younger brother. I want to know how he's doing. As long as he's good, I, I know a few details about him now. And it seems like he did well. I heard that he won a championship. I heard that he's in high school now at this one specific school. I heard a lot of things, and I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he's okay. But the conversation quickly went sour when this bitch was like, ooh, like it went from like soft, like, are you sure there's nothing we could do to have you back? Because everybody misses you. No, they fucking don't. And if they do, it's just because they are now, they have some sort of ego or like weird, like boo hoo, bitch. Y'all went to events without me. You did shit without me. You purposely excluded me from things and you purposely just made me feel awful. I got an eating disorder the summer before high school from how hard you had me trapped in that bedroom all fucking summer. Because you couldn't think to show me any decency. <laughs> I had to retrain myself to take up space. That it's okay to cook food and eat because it's not like I'm going to get attacked or harassed anymore. That it's okay to exist. Uh, and then, yeah, I wasn't mad at her for just saying that, but I thought to myself, they've acted like I wasn't a part of the family and that, and they neglected me for so long. There's nothing to want me back for because there's nothing we have in common. But once she dared try to do the whole, everyone's entitled to their own perspective. Yeah, bitch, and some people's perspectives are better than others. That's how it works. Like, who are you going to believe who abused who? The Nazi or the fucking person who got, who had to hide in a fucking attic or who got trapped in a fucking gas chamber or some fucked up shit, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's like, also, yeah, it's like, no, that that's just the perfect analogy because I don't even want to spend too much talking on that topic past 
It was a pathetic attempt at enabling and gaslighting and more. And it's like, cool. My perspective is my perspective. And because of that, I'm allowed to choose my own path based on my perspective. So it's like, woohoo, if she's sad and shit, because it's like, no, I can't see Tamiya and how she's growing up. You can see me on fucking magazines. You can see me on fucking videos. You can see me and be far. Because when I was around, you didn't want me around. So it's like you're free from any burden that you thought you had in relation to me. That's the beauty of it. Jared was out here when he was with me saying I had no ass, no social life. I was going to have a fucked up life, no future, this, this, and that. And then guess who came crawling back? Because it turns out he's the one who has an empty life without me around. Oh. Him. His only hobbies are, right now are alcoholism and porn. I was the one who inspired him to actually get out the house, try new things, do new things. And I guess now he's stuck with his little drinking buddies. Same for the biological slut that some may call a parental figure, but I call an annoying fucking bitch. She can now live with the freedom of, yippee, I don't have to care for the kid who I told everyone else was such a disappointment, such a problem, such an irritant. I get to have my life embracing my gender, my sexuality, my sensuality, my fashion choices, my life. I get to kill the parent in my head that was installed that told me I couldn't do a lot of things. And I got to simply prove I could. She, when I was around, was telling me, ooh, you can never move out, you can never move out, because you would just have a job at McDonald's and have to share a shitty one-bedroom with some other messy bitch at McDonald's, and you would have to pay, like, $3,000 in rent, and it's like, woohoo, none of that shit happened. I got a luxury job, like, damn near immediately. I was at luxury apartments, dressing up, having a lot of fucking money, more than I knew how to do with it. I was having a great time. My bosses loved me. They would literally send me cake. Imagine working a shift and then you get sent cake by your higher ups because of how good of a worker you are. I made a lot of friends. I had a lot of dating options. I had a lot of peace and I enjoyed myself. It's been about three years. They need to move the fuck on because when I see a family member in public, which is extremely fucking rare, I forget who they are. My brain goes, that's someone. I can't put my finger on it. And then it's like, oh, that's my aunt, right? Huh. and then I move on they also don't seem to realize I mastered detachment a long time ago when I was young like as young as 10 I thought to myself I'm going to be so happy when I leave and never come back and that's what they deserve and my mother had several moments growing up several where all she had to do was make the obvious right choice hey your daughter thinks she might be a victim of revenge porn and is going through an obviously abusive relationship Hmm, I should do my at least the bare minimum as a parent to show support and care for her because she obviously shows regret and she obviously was in a fucked up situation and being coerced and feeling like, yeah, just help me out. But she chose not to. She chose to do what got me an eating disorder that one summer before high school and she did it again. She's like, I'm going to use this as a fun anecdote to mock to me and make her feel like shit. She didn't seem like a slut to the whole fucking family. And just purposely used it as another tool to isolate me further for her own game and to laugh at me. She can laugh at me from a distance. And then that works for both of us. She gets to have whatever joy she could ever have. I get to have whatever joy I can have. And then it's not just like, oh, I'm trapped in some fucking sh shitty, lame-ass house, unable to do jack shit, feeling like hell. Because I have my own place and my own freedom and my own joy and bliss. She committed a lot of sh evil, evil deeds. A lot of them. More than I can count, even. Just because she wanted to laugh or just because she wanted to take out stress. And my and it's like, boo-hoo, bitch. Now you lost your power. You lost one of your little playthings and it's not quite as fun. Because deep down you always know, oh shit, I lost a kid. And she doesn't have any accountability skills or ability to self-reflect. So she's just mad that it's like, oh no, I'm angry. 
and I'm not able to hit to Mia when I'm angry. So what do I do with my anger? You go to fucking therapy. You get a life. Like, you know, another thing the bitch said was that was friends with my mother. I don't like that I have to call her a bitch now, but it's like she put herself in that position. She said, there's no handbook that one gets on parenting. I used to be the same way with my son. Boo-hoo, bitch. You're an enabler, too. You're an abuser, too. You're just standing up for my mother when you don't need to be, first of all. Because you're afraid that deep down your son's going to wake up, smell the roses, and go, hey, my mom was fucked up and I should hold her accountable as well. And then you're going to have to force to learn things like an apology or sincerity or not to be a selfish, narcissistic piece of shit. I fought like hell to get... Like, if I left hell, why would I want to go back to hell? It's like, oh, so I can make some old bitch with, who, need, who has better shit she should be working on, like her alcoholism and her age issues, which she has let worsen over the case of 20 years. Like, why would I go back? So that some old lady can feel good about being able to insult and mock me again. To have power and control over me. She's, I remember there were several times I could have left and I came back and she did that shit. So now I'm gone for good and she's mad about it. Find someone else to punch. Find someone else to yell at. Find someone else to mock. You're a pathetic ugly bitch and you need to die. People who try to come back are just the weakest to me. So weak. They'll be like, it's just so pathetic. And I don't know, I'm just tired of getting my hopes up for certain things, you know? Like, I'm not, like I didn't expect, I don't know. I Like, okay, that lady could have just simply been respectful about me saying no to seeing my mother. But no, I guess I gave her too much credit and hope that she was actually a decent fucking person. I even told her, I looked her in the eyes, I said I still have scars on my face from what my mom did to me, I'm not like no she got joy from doing that and that is the last bit of joy she can ever have from me ever and she should be happy that she has that lucky for me i use shea butter so the scars have mostly faded but you can still see them from certain angles i don't know i'm just tired of being let down I, i'm tired of it being like oh i have to cut off this friend because they're friends with predators i have to leave this relationship because the guy who i thought was such a dream actually is a worst nightmare and keeps somehow worsening forwards and getting worse and worse over time like some evil boss in a video game that has like multiple stages before they're finally defeated i'm just so tired i'm tired of like yeah i'm tired of dudes where it's like i could ask for so little out of them respect respect for a boundary respect for my body respect for my opinions and thoughts and hobbies and voice and then they don't respect it and then they get shocked that i leave i'm tired of those motherfuckers it's weird lake tahoe guy i probably would have been happy as fuck with them to this day all they needed to do was not be showing stalkery behavior that would have been great and then as for like it's like i'm just it's just and now it's just the stage where it's like, okay, I'm just tired of being let down again. I'm tired of having to suppress my emotions or be paranoid of who I care about now. Because people are very good at hiding who they are, and if they're not good at hiding it, then sometimes I don't see it. So it's like, you think it's some sweet lady coming to talk to you? Really, she has an agenda. It's so funny, the bitch kept going, Ooh, I'm not a bad person, I don't have bad energy, and trying to hug me. And it's like, oh, I can tell you have bad energy, because someone with good energy would not be doing this. And trying to, like, guilt trip me for not wanting to see a woman who, you know, left scars on my face, physically abused me as a child. Damn near sexual abuse, too. Not a good parent. Like, actually a disturbing human being. Like, should kill herself. Terrible fucking person. And I'm tired of making friends with people and then being put in positions where it's like, okay, which would I want? Do I want to hang with this person and go back to having like fun little dinners and fun little drinks and like fun conversations and stories shared and memories made? Or would I rather have self-respect and a lower chance that I allow abusive enabling people in my life and shitty people are allowed to stay just because I'm afraid to be alone? I finally got out of that trap and I cut off a bunch of people because I'm no longer afraid to be alone and call people out for who they are and what they are. 
and yeah I know what I want for myself peace and social friends and romances that are not dangerous or just I want some that are actually healthy for me that are good for my health and going to benefit my life I wish more people were capable of that on the bright side I am finding myself I'm happy I hooked up with that guy the other day because you know what it was a step in the right direction even though I'm not sure if I'll talk to that guy again who knows maybe when I'm ovulating I'll hit him up in a week maybe we never talk again I don't know I don't care all I know is I got to see a cute guy who told me that I had nice eyes and a great body and nice soft breasts and that I looked great and that I did a great job at what I was doing and got to give me like I still had someone to blush over and to swoon over and to orgasm over that was not one of the few one of the most recent toxic people I've thought about and cared about and even though it sucks that it's like okay we're not friends like I like I hate having it be like ooh, I'm afraid to even tell this dude like hey I hope shit's okay with your family or to invite him to this like event I had just because I had a free ticket no strings attached wasn't trying to date him anything but I don't know I'm disgusted by intimacy now maybe because I'm afraid of rejection or maybe because I'm just afraid of other people and how they could act because I've seen the worst of how they can get Either way, I'll keep it like this. I'm still grateful that I met him because he was still sexy and he was still sweet and he was kind and I appreciate that. Huh. I tried a lot. I tried hard. And at least I know that I still have a lot of love in my system to give to other people. Always. They say that love given is not lost and that it's still good to know to yourself that you have enough love and care and trust in other people in the first place. And it's not your fault that they fucked it up. So I'm learning lessons and still having fun. I'm making new friends and getting back into certain hobbies. And, you know, they say that not every fucking instance of healing is linear. Sometimes it feels like you're going backwards, but you're still usually going forward. Like, even if you feel like you're spiraling, you're spiraling upward. So you could be like at this point, but then you're like, oh, I'm doing better. Oh, it feels like I'm suffering again. Oh, I'm doing better. Suffering again. And it just keeps going. But eventually you'll get to the point where you're in nirvana and happy. And you're like, oh, what was I so upset about? Those people are gone. That person is gone. I'm in a whole new scenario. Like, you know, and sometimes you might even feel embarrassment. You'll be like, oh my god, I was cursing people out in discords and, like, <laughs> doing all those shady tweets. And <sighs> if I just knew that I could have gotten some new dick and some new hobbies, I would have sooner. And so that's what I'm learning about this situation with Jared and Morgan. I'm finally learning the lesson that sometimes you just gotta catch a dick and move the fuck on. And that if your friends are shitty, don't stick around because I remember in high school... Uh, when I was put in a similar situation where it was like, oh, hey, do you want to stick around? Do you want to be a lone wolf or do you want to stick around with the people who you thought cared about you for years but on the side of your ex, despite your ex being the wrong one, clearly? I chose a lone wolf. And I remember people missed me and were sad about it, but it's like, boo-hoo. You were acting like I was disposable and didn't matter. You showed who you valued. Stick with who you value. Stick with him and his little tantrums and his bad attitude and his shittiness. Me? I'm going to go over here, work on my screenwriting, going on dates. In fact, it's relevant. I'll share it. I remember at some point in high school, I was crying over this ex-boyfriend I had. I was 17. He was like 19, 20. Not good. Don't. That's statutory. But either way, I remember I was crying over him because something traumatic happened with him. Multiple traumatic things. And then what happened was I ended up like, um, what happened? Oh yeah, I ended up. My ex in that uh, special ed class, he walked past me and joked to one of his friends, friends, they didn't care about him. And they were like, <laughs> look, bro, she's still crying over me. Oh, my God. And I started laughing immediately. And I saw his face. He was shook. He was like, what the fuck? Why is she laughing? But I started laughing off the bat because it kind of reminded me like, OK, yes, I'm crying over Maddie leaving me for another woman and being such a shitty asshole and fucking terrible about it. But you know what? 
At least I'm not tripping off fucking Zachary. That was how many exes ago? That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight men ago. Like, <laughs> and I just laughed. And Zach was mad, but it's like, yeah, nigga, I'm not tripping off you no more. I got new people to cry over, new people to stress over. And even if it feels like a disservice, sometimes it's a blessing because it still reminds you of your progress. Like I said, sometimes it feels like you're going in circles and you're meeting the same, like you're meeting shitty people over and over again. But it's still like, nope, because I could have stuck with just Zach and being friends with people who would have tried to bully me into getting back with Zach or treated me like shit for not dating Zach and like stayed downwards. But instead I went upwards, got goals, made new friends made new boyfriends, got shitted on by boyfriends and felt fucking terrible, met new, and then eventually, now it's like, I forget Zach even existed. Like, even, like, I went 40 minutes without mentioning that nigga, and I forgot that he was ever something that was seen as heavy in my life that I had to care about, you know? And that's how it works. I'm just at the stage where it feels like I'm hitting a low, but in reality, I'm still hitting a high. Because it's like, it's been weeks and I haven't messaged Jared haven't said shit to him he messaged me and broke no contact first because he thought he could slither in no harry potter but like no i decided fuck that shit and i'm strong probably like if you would have asked me weeks ago maybe i would have been like hi i knew you'd message me first or another week after that i probably would have been like why are you messaging me in the first place i need to know but it's been several weeks and i've thought about a lot of trauma a lot has happened between us and it's like no yeah no it's like he's not even re- deserving of response i remember i saw his message i just immediately went to my instagram and started shitting on that nigga he saw it all and blocked me again and then unblocked me and then blocked me again i saw it all <sighs> but regardless oops I almost flashed you oh that would have sucked if i would have had to toss out a 40 minute long video but yeah he sucks but it's okay because I'm still growing upwards and even though there's days where it's like okay I'm laying down I'm feeling sad I'm feeling low energy I'm feeling like shit there's still benefits out there for me and fun to be had so it's okay (laughs) I was propositioned to talk to another friend of mine the Seamus guy because I guess he was just like oh hey you know it would be nice to come and talk and check in sometime and I don't know I've seen the way he acts and I know how he is and I know how I get I'm thoughtful I'm I appreciate the idea but at the same time eh, some things are best left dead anyway I think that's all I have to say for now I'm gonna go think about my hookups penis and also probably get some tacos bye